So Claudio, there is a lot of uh, happening going on in Europe at the moment and uh, there is a lot of uh, popular alternatives uh, that are currently being uh, shaking a little bit uh, the future of Europe. Uh, we, have, uh, we have Podemos, we have Syriza that have brought the left narrative a little bit in the foreground. Uh, and um, you've created a civic platform, Demos, about a year ago. Um, and I guess um, these movements have been an inspiration for you, but you, can you tell us how and, um, and what you've been, how, you, how, how did, you, did you build your platform until now? Well, uh, of course, Podemos was important. Ourselves, we uh, were very active in our own uh, Occupy Indignados uh, uh, movements in Romania. Uh, basically, uh, we needed uh, to form another type of uh, organization, which is, of course, inspired by the kind of Indignado social movements, but also has a more political and electoral aim, in the sense that Mobilization is very good, citizen mobilization is actually uh, indispensable to uh, keep the countries uh, we're talking about on a democratic track. But also you need a more kind of a, um, institutionalized way of, of, of acting. So uh, we looked at Europe, we looked at the Central Eastern Europe, uh, we looked at Romania and uh, seeing that the existing party system, uh, including the so-called social democrats in Romania there, having a, a very strong neoliberal tendencies, but also conservative and nationalistic in social values, we decided to uh, make the step and say, uh, here we are. Uh, we are a movement that is uh, taking the structural problems of the society seriously. Uh, we are also European and uh, let's say internationalist. We don't, uh, we don't, uh, uh, we don't defend, uh, let's say, the et ethnic uh, 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 nature of our country. Uh, so basically we're a European uh, uh, movement, uh, but also taking on very seriously the socio and ecological problems of uh, our country. So basically, to answer, it was a need also in the society for an articulation of this kind of democratic left ecologist uh, project. Okay, you've just mentioned also that uh, you are uh, European and international and uh, as you know, currently at the moment, uh, nationalism is on the rise all over Europe. We know it, um, Le Pen made it to the second round of the elections a few days ago, uh, but um, there is a, a really um, strong comeback of um, also anti-European feelings mm -hmm. um, and um, could you say what kind of impact does it have on um, for the Romanian citizens, but also for your movement now? I think the elections in France are very important for the European Union and for Romania as such, uh, because France is uh, kind of uh, also giving the tone in the, on the continent. And frankly, I'm a bit worried of the fact that 
the alternative to uh, neoliberal uh, uh, thinking and neoliberal action is unfortunately the right-wing populism, which is represented by Marine Le Pen. And I think it's a complete, completely misplaced and wrong uh, response. And I'm, uh, really, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really worried that we could not, for, for now, for now uh, articulate a project in which we take on the, the, the errors and the, the impact of uh, neoliberalism from a social and econo ecological point of view, uh, while keeping our uh, international and European outlook. Uh, it has been tried by the two candidates uh, who didn't make it to the second round, Malanchon and Hamon, uh, but apparently uh, this kind of social and ecological vote, even though it was solid, it was fragmented. So uh, basically we're looking at France, uh, we're looking at other countries in Europe, and hopefully uh, there will be a, this kind of a social uh, block or platform which is building and takes on neoliberalism. Otherwise, uh, neoliberalism and extre uh, uh, ext uh, extreme right populists, they will keep feeding each other and not solve any problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and also um, what is interesting is that you mentioned Mélenchon and the fact that he was also in the foreground, you know, like defending social, social and economic change um, and ecological change. Sorry. And um, what is interesting is what do you think? Uh, because it is also labeled as a as a as a populist, and Podemos is also increasingly also labeled as a populist. And do you think it's a, it's the right strategy to address, you know, like um, these challenges today? Well. I, I, we definitely have to talk more with the people. Uh, we definitely need to uh, encourage citizens to participate more. We also uh, have to be somehow kind of emotionally involved in this politics because it's about our, our lives. So in this respect, uh, I wouldn't mind to, uh, to be populist. In other respects, I think uh, we don't have time to kind of uh, uh, and of spend our time with uh, kind of fantasies, economic fantasies. We have to be, be very pragmatic. Uh, we have to offer solutions, which are there. I mean, uh, we we still have a lot of uh, room for maneuver with our own governments uh, in Europe to work for a more equal and fair society. Uh, so basically, I would I would see the appeal, the popular appeal, as 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 normal. In the same time, it has to be doubled by very concrete programs of, uh, of solving some of the most pressing issues of, of, of our societies. Welcome to Talk Real. We are today in Tirana for the Activist Forum um, and we have the privilege to welcome three speakers. Uh, to talk about nationalism and transnationalism. So we welcome Eva from the Green News uh, Serbia, and, uh, uh, who, which is a member also of um, the Left Summer Summit Serbia. We welcome also Ines, who is a part of um, an arts and culture association called Servana, and also an activist in the One City, One Struggle uh, in Sarajevo, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we welcome Bessian, who is um, an activist in Tirana uh, for the hashtag initiative. So uh, the situation is quite serious in Europe at the moment, and uh, nationalism is on the rise. Uh, we've seen in the recent elections uh, in Western Europe, but also in Eastern Europe, a breakthrough of uh, far-right parties. Uh, not only a breakthrough, a stabilization of uh, far-right parties that are a part of the, pol of the landscape. Uh, in many of the political landscape in many countries. Um, and um, my first question to you would be, uh, from your perspective in, in your countries, how do you, how do you react uh, to this? And, uh, and uh, what, is, uh, what is the atmosphere uh, in your countries rela related to this? Well, for me, to be honest, it was very interesting to, to, to preserve uh, the situation in Europe for the past uh, few months, especially 
now with uh, the latest few days ago with the uh, elections in France and uh, the Brexit and you know we can look at even uh, the winning of Donald Trump in America it's all very much connected we live in a globalized world and uh, everything affects one to another um, you know the point of view from from Bosnia um, and, and from Sarajevo is that people are very interested in what is happening in Europe uh, for us, we are living this nationalism for the past 25 years, so it is nothing new. We are, let's say, uh, used to it, and uh, the nationalistic parties, unfortunately, are winning all the elections for the past 25 years. But our context is different, and uh, our and reasons for for uh, such um, such de decisions or such voting by the people are, of course, different. If we ha if we look at uh, the fall of Yugoslavia, the war that happened in the Balkans and everything else that came with it, uh, uh, and the rise of the nationalism, of course, in the 90s. Um, if we look back, uh, for example, uh, in France, um, or, or, or Brexit issue, um, from, what, from my own perspective, you know, I'm seeing it um, in a sense that um, I feel that you know, the, the, the right wing, the rise of the right wing, the populist rise, is uh, something where you know the, the left is losing its ground in a sense that you know the right wing has overtaken the the the, the, the themes and 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 the, and the, and the, and the subjects that left should be addressing at this point of time in not just in the European Union but in general because for example if you look at you know what Le Pen is, is talking about in in south of France or uh, or what she's talking about on the north of France is completely different at one uh, to to one audience she's talking about uh, problems with uh, migration and problems with you know people uh, with this uh, islamophobic uh, attitude towards the especially the migrants coming from um, arabic countries or middle east but if you look at the, the, the other point, she's talking to the worker, she's talking to the unemployed, she's talking to pre uh, precarious workers, she's uh, you know, addressing all these issues that the left should be addressing and the left is obviously failing to address at this certain point of time. The same issue happened with Brexit. You know, we are, Farage was t uh, talking about how the money that the UK is giving to, uh, uh, to European Union is going to go for the healthcare. So, you know, we have this switch of, switch of theses, switch of, uh, you know, um, uh, elements which are so important for the left. And um, what is happening in Europe in that sense is also happening with, with us uh, here. You know, this defragmentation of the left in general. This is not just in Europe, but this is everywhere. You know, uh, so many little initiatives, so many little parties but not really a good collaboration and not addressing, you know, the, the, the real issues is something that we are, uh, we are uh, facing and it's a big question how to address them and uh, how to look at the really a global context because it's not possible, you know, uh, for Balkans to be excluded from this. It's not possible for either Europe to ignore what's happening in the Balkans or Balkans to ignore what's happening the, in, in the EU, although many countries are not part of the European Union. You know, all these issues that uh, we are facing for the past 25 years seems to be coming to the top of the agenda in the, in the European Union as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very true that there is a, there is a shift um, of, um, to the right in general uh, and, um, and also um, a normalization of certain discourses that um, a couple of uh, years ago was not even thinkable. No? And, um, uh, and it's quite interesting to, to, to see that today. There is a lot of uh, play of fears uh, and of emotions also that is quite quite strong. Uh, the fears of losing his job, the fear of the immigrants, and they are clearly identified enemies. But um, maybe I could, you know, just the, the, for example, in Bosnia, you know, when when the uh, when the elections are approaching, you have of course three main nationalistic parties: Bosnia, Croat, and Serb. So what they do, of course, is this, uh, you know, sharing of fear amongst each other. You have to be afraid of the other one because this nationality will take over this or that and so on and so on. And in Europe is, you know, the, st uh, the story against the immigration of, you know, somebody coming from Syria is going to take your job, is going to take your, your um, you know, you're going to have a health care. You know, for example, I remember a woman in France who told me, you know, but I'm a French citizen, I, I, I'm born in France, my whole family has come from France, we are French, you know, and I see these people coming from abroad and they got the health care instantly and they got, you know, the, the, the social uh, help and they got everything. And what do I have? I live of, I don't know, six, seven hundred euros per month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So th these are, you know, and uh, of course this has been accumulated for years, you know, of course this is also an issue of the European Union, of uh, social economic <laughs> policies and program of European Union, of austerity measures, of, of everything that has been happening since 2008 in Europe. And um, I, I, I think, you know, we are, now, we are now facing it for real and it's, uh, and, and it's not maybe so surprising as we are you know, <coughs> experiencing it at the moment. And in Serbia and in Albania, I'm just <coughs> now uh, talking to you. I mean, um, how, how do you feel? What kind of forms uh, nationalism is taking and on which fears, uh, you know, specifically, mm -hmm. uh, you know, nationalist movements uh, are playing on? I mean, maybe, I don't know, either I one of you, <laughs> we can start. Um, the thing that is actually worrying me more than, than um, some uh, uh, nationalist movements which are still a bit marginal in, in Serbia is this uh, exactly normalization and um, uh, th this incorporated right wing in mainstream in so-called center politics in Serbia which is taking place and um, plus uh, we have this encouragement from their partners in nationalism from uh, other parts of Europe which is not only Western Europe, but uh, as well uh, Eastern Europe is already um, um, uh, 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 filled with, uh, with nationalism. And uh, I'm seriously worried that uh, uh, this partnership will uh, bring probably even more uh, of this fear mongering. And now we have, uh, uh, not now, but for uh, quite some time we have uh, uh, refugees uh, that are uh, in this route that is uh, crossing <coughs> also uh, this part of Europe. Uh, and uh, one of the fears could be this. Um, perhaps in Serbia this is not yet uh, uh, um, uh, put in, in the use um, of nationalism. Uh, we have some other maybe neighboring uh, nations quarrels, but not... Uh, um, uh, still not against refugees, but it can also turn really, really uh, fast yeah, in, in this direction. I think the task for a left to be to start deconstructing nationalism. Then what is, where is nationalism coming from? Exactly what, what Ines said. Uh, uh, what, uh, what, what are the catchy uh, narratives that, that people who left should be addressing and articulating their demands? What are they uh, um, caught uh, uh, in with this, and uh, uh, I, I would uh, uh, I would uh, really uh, uh, suggest maybe that uh, this kind of of course uh, uh, transnational cooperation counter uh, against already existing uh, transnational cooperation between far right, in example, because they are really good in 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 uh, um, uh, cooperating. They have this uh, kind of. Uh, traditional uh, friends uh, among all kinds of na uh, nations and and uh, we are I, th I think that we are somewhere maybe um, uh, lacking that in in some way and we don't have that much of a uh, uh, structure for for this uh, cooperation and of course uh, left is um, international uh, inherently but uh, inherently but yeah yeah, so we're going to come uh, again on the, on the part of the transnational uh, strategies uh, to fight about the far right, but I wanted to focus again on Albania because what is also interesting in Albania is that uh, it was not part of uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, also, um, it's, uh, it was not uh, like a country where migrants came through so much. So I just want to know, you know, what, um, you know, what forms nationalism take in Albania and what is their object in comparison to others. Okay, I think that uh, not only in Albania, but I'll take, uh, I think in the whole, there is a difference between nationalism in the Balkans and nationalism in, in Europe. And uh, nationalism in the, in the Balkans is uh, mainly about history. And uh, it recalls the glory of, of some days when our nations uh, were great and then they were fighting against the enemy and usually the enemy is each other. Uh, it's the other nation. And... Uh, uh, well, in, in Europe right now, the nationalism is an economical one. Uh, it's about jobs, it's about uh, fear of people lo losing those jobs or losing pieces of economy that they see other people coming from abroad 
immigrants uh, usually uh, taking their jobs or ta taking their uh, economy and taking their profits. So there is a there is a difference between uh, these two kinds of nationalism. Luckily in Albania, nationalism is not an issue uh, because uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, even because of uh, of uh, our history and uh, our tradition, but even because uh, the way uh, the political parties in Albania have kept their, their rhetoric apart from nationalism, uh, it just doesn't sell politically. So we don't have a uh, an important political party that, uh, that uh, uh, articulates nationalism as a, as a mainstream argument. Uh, time after time, our politicians, they try to use our nationalism more as a leverage uh, towards Europe when they don't get what they want. Uh, last example, it was uh, Mr. Rama a couple of days ago uh, when he and Mr. Tachi in Kosovo, they together said that uh, if EU is not accepting uh, Albania and Kosovo uh, into EU, then we'll unite. And they know that this will create a counter reaction from Serbia and, uh, and other countries. And uh, But actually they don't mean it but they're, they're just using this uh, as a threat and as a leverage towards the uh, European Union leaders when they don't get the support they want. Mm -hmm. Nationalistic rhetoric uh, in Albania you will find uh, only in uh, football, football matches. And uh, it's uh, actually it's something that uh, belongs to the, to the football fans. So they are the ones that are promoting big Albania, great Albania. They are the ones that are uh, uh, provoking in a way uh, these things, but it stays there. And even for the for the people, if you go and ask around, it's more like a funny sport club thing, fun fans things, football fans things, and it's not a, a real argument. It doesn't find any support among the people. And <coughs> you can see that even in countries like uh, like Macedonia, for instance, where Albanians live. If you see the last elections. Uh, uh, majority of Albanians they supported the Macedonian party for the first time. They they, they decided to to switch, and no matter there, the rhetoric is pretty much uh, nationalistic between the the Albanian parties and Macedonian parties because of the context and the way the republic has been created. Uh, nevertheless, this didn't really matter for the Albanians. They voted uh, for Zaya, and they voted. Uh, they gave so many votes for the first time to a uh, party that belongs to the Macedonian uh, ethnicity. So it's not an issue and it's not a, a, a real argument uh, argument to, to Albania. I can explain why, but it will take much more than, uh, than this. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it's already a first start <laughs> to uh, have an understanding. Um, well, there are other countries in Europe where there is not so many uh, national nationalist tendencies, Spain and Portugal are one of them. But I wanted to come back to uh, the subject of the uh, European Union, because the European Union uh, also uh, is, uh, is uh, criticized a lot by the nationalists. Uh, some of them, some of the critics uh, could, we could say that could be justified, but not <laughs> what the nationalists criticize, because it's true that the migration policy in, uh, of the European Union was a, was a catastrophe uh, and uh, and uh, you know because they didn't manage to coordinate uh, efforts to actually welcome in dignity mm -hmm. most of the of the refugees and migrants that came uh, in the past years but the, also with the austerity measures with Greece I mean and uh, and Brexit of course is a, is a, is a strong answer to, to this uh, also now in your countries which are not yet even not yet members of the European Union is the European Union still attractive it's attractive in a way that, uh, of course, political elite is uh, promoting this, as Bessian said, uh, same as nationalism, is uh, using this in some sort of short-term politics that is aiming a local audience, that is aiming at the voters that are there in the, in, in the countries. Um, but what is uh, really interesting, what is happening nowadays, that um, there is this whole part of, uh, that, the, let's say, progressive part of the society um, that uh, feels um, that the, this process of uh, exception and negotiation is taking too long. It actually doesn't have any end uh, in, in recent, um, in, in times uh, ahead of us and that we are practically 
let's say, uh, we will have to defend so-called European values by ourselves in our respected countries, uh, which is uh, also, again, fueled by uh, EU uh, not giving any answer in, uh, on these processes, but also uh, endorsing uh, non-democratic um, uh, practices. We had a recent example of elections in Serbia, where we had uh, really uh, um, uh, major problems in uh, media coverage. We had uh, problems in the whole campaign that uh, by uh, many sources w w was not fair and was not democratic enough, but still um, uh, respected uh, uh, and uh, um, um, prominent members of, of EU uh, establishment were rushing into congratulating new president that is at the same time prime minister, um, practically uh, creating uh, uh, being a big endorsement for, for this uh, structural uh, uh, strong leader, which they then, um, uh, so to say, justify as some kind of necessity for stability in the region. Yeah, so yeah, this support is a bit um, com it's, it's problematic. And it's going it down, it's going down. Okay. Uh, from, from what I can see, you know, I, 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 was, I would observe it, you know, I was observing it for years and maybe I could also compare the, 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 the examples of Croatia and Bosnia. For example, Croatia was the country that had the longest way, the longest path so far to European Union. It lasted, I think, more than 13 to 14 years, the whole accession process to European Union. Of course, they had a huge issues, especially regarding the Hague Tribunal and the, you know, the war crimes committed and so on and so on. And you, know, you could see by, uh, by the m most of the, the inquiries that were made about how people feel, are they Eurosceptic or not, and how does it go, that in the beginning you had you know, the, the support for the entrance to EU, which was more than 80%. By the time that Croatia was supposed to enter the European Union, it was falling so rapidly that they had to change the law you know, uh, where it was census was not 50% up, but they lower it down in order for enough people to go out and be able, you know, to vote actually for the entrance into European Union because the, uh, you know, the, the referendum was there and everything was done after so many years. So, of course, you're not going to miss the chance to, of the people to say, yes, finally, we want to uh, enter the EU. A uh, few years after they entered, but the, the problem is that, you know, people are not seeing what is changing. You know, is anything changed now, you know, because, for example, in Bosnia, when you talk about entering the European Union, people are, are thinking about, uh, oh, we are not going to have visas, we are going to be able to go to, to work freely or educate ourselves or whatever, you know, in, in, in the European Union. So these are some of the benefits they see. They are not going to be sus uh, watched as suspects on every airport that we arrive with the Bosnian <laughs> passport and so on, you know, because they feel mm -hmm. as the citizens of, of a second, third or fifth row, you know. Uh, but when you talk about, you know, how it will actually change your life, or will it change your life, you are seeing people who are now more and more, after seeing everything that is happening in the European Union, are saying, you know, well, you know, if this is the European Union, and if this is what it represents, you know, are we really sure this is the path that we are supposed to take, you mm -hmm. know? Although many people having in mind the, the very complicated situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina are saying the European Union will fall apart before you know Bosnia is ever able to enter and fulfill all, all mm, the all the, all the um, issues and, and tasks that had to be fulfilled to, to, to enter the European Union. Um, on the other hand, you know you have this opinion that what do we do if we don't enter the European Union? Where are we then? Then we are in this Balkan limbo, you know, as always staying between, you know, different sorts of interests and, you know, interests are not anymore just uh, EU or Russia, <laughs> you know, it is now also, you know, the, 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 for example, in the case of Bosnia, a strong influence from, from Turkey, a strong influence from some Arabic countries like Qatar, like Saudi Arabia, you know, the investments that are coming, mm. the everything, you know, mm. things are changing and they are politically changing and the interests are changing. So, you know, uh, in this uh, sort of context, our politicians are saying that the European Union is the best and the only way. But unfortunately, European Union, you know, uh, had a very long time put the Balkans aside, 
you know, had uh, inner uh, things to do and inner affairs to, to handle. And now, you know, it was always about what Eva said, stability, stability, stability. So let just the Balkans be peaceful, you know, let, let's not have another mm. war again anywhere, it would be whether it's Kosovo, Macedonia, or Bosnia, or, mm. or Serbia, or any other country. But, you know, as this time was passing, our nationalistic parties were, you know, doing the devastation themselves of all of these countries, all of these econo economies. And now, you know, we are facing a situation which, in, which might and could be potentially very dangerous, not just for, for the Balkans, but for the European Union. So um, I think that Balkans should be back on the agenda, you know, but uh, it's not just the Balkans EU should deal with itself inside, you know, with the transformation of itself where the Balkans is just one part of, of this, this whole puzzle. Yeah, that's a big program for on the plan of the <laughs> European <laughs> Union to actually, you know, uh, go beyond, you know, like the original idea of the peace project and then the economic project and then, you know, but how do you create solidarities? And uh, um, maybe, um, Bessian, um, I mean, we covered a little bit, you know, but maybe just have a, couple of insight of what, what do you, what, what, how is it in Albania, and then maybe you can continue on saying how important it is um, to have transnational corporations already, because you, you don't have to wait, you know, to be part of the European Union, also as activists, you know, to actually uh, start, uh, you know, like uh, building bridges and um, uh, for struggles that are already identified, and you, you already said the far right is, is what could be one of them. So. I believe that uh, in, in Albania the support for the European Union is, is still there. Uh, but uh, <coughs> of course it's not nice to hear, uh, uh, to hear all these uh, nationalistic rhetorics growing in, in Europe. Because uh, uh, you hear all these politicians like, uh, like Le Pen or uh, Grillo in Italy or uh, uh, other guys across Europe starting to, to accuse immigrants because they are, and, and blaming them for the fall of Europe, and we're the immigrants. So we're, we're the other guys, mm -hmm. because uh, most of the Albanians, they emigrated. Half of the population mainly is, lives abroad, and half of that lives uh, mainly in Europe. And uh, there are so many Albanians, hundreds of thousands, living in Italy, living in Greece, living in France, living in Germany. They are the immigrants, you know. And they are the people that this Marie Le Pen saying that they are they stole the economy of France and they, they stole the money from the French and they didn't, actually. These are hard-working people that go gone there to live a better life and they work very hard and they work very hard and they Usually build it the together. Usually the French don't want and, and they took all these jobs that, uh, that uh, mainly Italians, Greeks, French, Germans, they, mm. they couldn't do or they didn't want to do okay. and, uh, and they earned their position in, in their societies. And of course, among them, there are there were problematic people, there's, there are among every society problematic people, but the fault is not, the fault that the economy is not doing well in Europe, it's not the fault of the immigrants, it's the fault of the politicians. And I think uh, we should spend some more time looking not only at the offer that is getting support right now, for instance, we blame Le Pen and say, oh, she's saying this, she's saying that, but she's saying this and that because there, there is a, a 22% of, uh, of French population voting for her. And uh, it's, there is a 22% of French population voting for her because probably the counter offer is ho more horrible than what she is saying. And the counter offer, unfortunately, is the same establishment that has been leading Europe right now. And they have failed to show to the people that the project can provide prosperity, can provide security, can provide solidarity, and that uh, these concepts, uh, they can coexist together. And the counter offer is still failing to show to the people something new that will convince them that things can change. Unfortunately, on one hand, you have the same Europe that we have had so far, that created some economical crisis, that, that made people lose some jobs, and made people lose some hope, and made people lose their homes and whatever, and this, establish, this, this old establishment is keeping the same rhetoric, no matter this rhetoric has been proven in many cases not to work. 
they're not trying to change. Yeah, I mean, this links to a very, uh, like, to also building a very strong and uh, transformative narrative, you know, that could balance out, you know, like this mm -hmm. offer that is not this established offer mm -hmm. that you, that is not, you know, like clearly fulfilling the needs of uh, Europeans. A short, like, very uh, round, but very short, just <laughs> to say uh, one thing about uh, what do you think um, would be for you, like, uh, a good, um, example of transnational solidarity and what would be the object of this solidarity? What would be, which mentioned far right, is there anything else that you think would be important uh, to work on as a, maybe more as a transnational community in the Balkans, but also beyond the Balkans? Um, I'm not sure th this will answer your question, mm. but uh, more uh, of uh, uh, cooperation and exchange of knowledge about the commons and uh, common management and uh, uh, common ownership, which is uh, now, I think, in Balkans still from, uh, has some heritage from socialism. And now we have uh, some uh, other examples from other parts of Europe that are practically uh, aiming the same target and, and this is what, what the commons are. And uh, this could uh, raise solidarity uh, among unions, among uh, workers, among people, activists that are in the struggle for, um, in example, uh, natural resources, etc. So this may um, have a, a counterweight from uh, uh, national, uh, international cooperation. Yeah, I, I believe that, uh, I, st I still believe that uh, we don't have an issue with nationalism, a big issue with nationalism in the region. I think that that's, that belongs more to the past than to the present or the future. Because people gone past that, people are tired of that. Uh, many people, if you, if you go and ask, they, they think it's a stupid rhetoric because it doesn't give them any, any jobs, it doesn't give them any prosperity. So people are, are learn to move uh, past that. This on one hand, on the other hand, there is a, the flow of information uh, in the days we're talking. It's much, much bigger than, than than in the days of the past, where uh, politicians could easily manipulate because they owned the mainstream media and they could deliver the messages they want. So <coughs> people now can talk and exchange, and this is what we are doing, for instance, as movements. We all talk and uh, exchange with each other, and uh, personally I have relations with, uh, with uh, tens of uh, people from the region, but even, even beyond, even in, in Europe, and we exchange projects and we exchange ideas and we support each other in, in several fights. So I don't think this is uh, any more an issue, especially now that we can freely talk and uh, we can get connected very easily through the modern technology. Uh, what is, I think what is, uh, uh, what remains still problematic is again the way European Union institutionally behaves towards uh, uh, supporting this, this kind of uh, connection. We don't see that. We don't see still uh, big support from European Union uh, towards uh, these uh, transnational uh, organizations or transnational links uh, between, uh, between countries, maybe even countries that had problems uh, before. And I think that uh, there is a need uh, for more to be done uh, in, in this aspect. Because we can really create very good models in the Balkans that could serve as a as a model for conflict solving in, even in Europe and other, or other countries as well. So the question of resources, the question of sharing a lot, and maybe you yeah. have the last word. Well, what would be you know, I, I think it's, you? A, it's a combination of, 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 of both said uh, as well. I think that none of our struggles are particular struggles. We have very similar mm. struggles. You know, this what has uh, this two days in Tirana uh, has shown us for one more time, uh, you know, in the hundreds and dozens of times, is that we actually are addressing the same, the same issues. And these issues are also the issues of, of Europe as well, maybe not in, in the same way as, as in Balkans, every country has its own context, of course. But the issues of unemployment, issues of, 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 of the economy, you know, which are, we, we, we need to make New, new models and new, new deals for, for, for how to resolve the, 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 the situation in Europe. And um, I think that, you know, this kind of uh, uh, events, but not just this, uh, is something that helps us um,
to, to, to share our ideas, share our experiences, which is very important, uh, to do the know-how, you know, because all of these, we are not inventing the hot water. This has al already uh, been done in many other countries, and, you know, this, this connection that we are making are something that, you know, could be, at, I suppose, at one time, uh, on a higher level, because uh, we are not going to resolve any of these problems on our national levels. This is a much bigger story than one state, two states, or five states uh, together. This is a, 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 a European story, and uh, I am sure that you know when it comes to to uh, new ways and new paths, we will be all we will all have to create them together. It's a perfect last word because this is also exactly uh, what European Internet is promote, and also in this activist forum, this is exactly what what kind of discourse we need. And, and so, thank you for pointing it out, and thank you for uh, participating to this debate. And uh, yeah, and um, I thank wish you, you all a very us. successful uh, discussions in the next days. Thank you. Thank you.